Hey coach, what are the best pedals for my road bike? I've been getting this question a lot recently, so let's see if I can answer your questions in this video. Disclaimer before we start, there is no one pedal system that's far superior to others. Just because some marketing campaign tells you that a particular rider won the Tour de France using this pedal, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. Each pedal system has pros and cons based on you, your size, your power, your type of cycling. So let's dive in and look at the most popular ones that I get in the studio, and that is the Shimano, the Look, and this crazy little button called the Speed Play. But if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to share another pedal that might surprise you that's actually exceedingly good on a road bike. Let's start by looking at the Shimano pedal. So, question for you. Did you choose your pedal system or did it choose you? What I mean by that is, did you buy your bike secondhand or did the shop that you got your bike from push a particular brand of pedal to you? So, the one it came with is the one that you're now using. Maybe it's always been that way and you've never really thought about it much. Why? Because you're putting your foot on it, you don't see it, you don't think about it. But wait a minute, coach, it is surely the system where all the power is transferred. Of course it is, and you're not a moron, you know that. So if anything from this video, maybe you'll go and look at your pedals. Hey, you might even take them out and grease them and put them back in. <gasps> That'd be a first. Anyway, the Shimano pedal, popular. It's very durable. It's got great stability and it's stiff, okay? So you're gonna feel really solid in the pedal. With that stiffness, it does come with a little bit of a warning for newbies. It can be difficult to get out of. Now, I know you can move the tension, but it's maybe not the pedal if you're a lighter rider, if you're a rider who's got a very narrow foot, because most pedals, and I've got the RS500 here, uh, right through to the Ultegra carbon pedal here, they'll all come with the setup system of the yellow cleat. Now, I don't want to dive into cleats too much in this video because I can share some special videos about cleats, but that yellow cleat has got that six degree float. So even with that, it's quite difficult to get out of. But I would always say if somebody's jumping up to an Ultegra, they might be looking at a blue cleat rather than a yellow cleat anyway. So that's something to think about. But the entry standard Shimano pedal, well, it's pretty crap. And here's a thought for you. If you're jumping into clipless pedals, you've never had them before, what are you gonna do? You're probably going to look at entry level pedals. I don't want to spend too much money, coach. I've come from flats. I'm gonna try the system out you're not actually getting the full experience of what these pedals can do. Now, if you're somebody with a narrow foot, that's me, this is maybe also not the pedal for you. And this is again just on aesthetics. I find that with the narrow foot, the cleat sticks out the side. And my brain can't comprehend with that cleat edge flaring out the side of the thickened shoe because I'm thinking, hmm, that doesn't look right. I don't like that. I'm losing power there. So it's just a thought because remember, there is no one system that has been measured to give more power. That is all to do with the rider. But Shimano, give you a lifetime worth of love on that pedal. I've ridden them and I've got no complaints with them. Okay, let's look at the Look pedal system. Oh, that's a bad joke. I am a dad, sorry. I can get away with it. But this is my preferred pedal choice. I've got the Blade here, Carbon, and I've got the Kyo 2 Max. I use this mainly on my indoor bike and my winter bike. But I love the pedal because it's suitable for a lighter rider, somebody with a narrower foot, so I can fit the cleat nicely on the plate of the shoe without it sticking out. So I would advise riders like myself who are light, Riders who are female, not like myself, but riders with a narrow foot. Also, if you are scared about unclipping in terms of the tension, this pedal is easier to get out of, okay? I know some people may question that, but it is slightly easier than the Shimano pedal to unclip. Now, when these guys invented the clipless pedal, it didn't have any tension, but they seem to have developed that system a little bit more than Shimano. Tension was actually brought in by time. We won't be covering the time pedal in this system. Maybe I'll do a, a video on outer space products because time would come into that. It's a strange experience using a time pedal. But that's look. And remember that any pedal system, Shimano as well, the price point is obviously to do with the different materials are used. 
the bearings, etc. So you've got plastic through to carbon, you've got steel through to titanium with the axle. So if you can stretch your budget just to jump beyond the entry pedal, you will get a better experience. I think I've already said that, haven't I? I'm getting you to try and spend all your money, but it's your call. That's Luke. I love him. Frenchy, Frenchy. So let's look at the Speedplay pedal now. I see this in the studio, mainly from time trial riders, probably brought about by the success of riders like Bradley Wiggins and Fabian Cancellara. They use the Speedplay, it's a double-sided pedal, but it's quite small, isn't it? So for larger riders, it may not be that suitable because we're looking for stability through the pedal. The ankle is a pretty unstable joint. So bigger rider, bigger foot, smaller contact point. It's quite easy to work out that they may not be having the best stability, but it's going to work for a number of riders. The reason I'm kind of not anti-speed play, but a little bit distant from them and I don't really push them is because they claim that they can fix knee pain. Now that's a load of bullshit because knee pain is a combination of lots of different angles, forces, maybe a, a hip issue, a saddle issue, the bike may be the wrong size, maybe the wrong shoe, there may be an ankle problem. Speed play pedals are very adjustable. In fact, they can go to 15 degrees float. We've got our yellow Shimano that you're going to get with most of the Shimano pedals that you buy. At six degrees, you've got your red Luke cleat that's at nine degrees, okay? This bad boy can go to 15 degrees and it's because of the way that the cleat works. There is such adjustability to it, but the cleat is a freaking nightmare as well. It's like playing with Lego, but if it works for you, it's great. Now, the thing that it does have is axle length changes. Now, this can help riders who need a wider Q factor, but Shimano now have extra spindle length in a lot of their pedals. But do you know that if you need extra Q factor, I've seen some riders buy speed play pedals, they've seen them online and they've gone for a really cheap price and they've bought them and they've got these 12 millimeter and they look like they've shit their pants. Oh, can you say that on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> now the Q factors out here, yeah, like John Wayne on a horse, so be careful. But maybe you do need a wider Q factor. You've got that sort of what I call the V engine as your legs stick out when you pedal. And it's got nothing to do with your saddle height. It's because your feet are too close together according to the way that your legs fall from your pelvis. That's another video, isn't it? But these are kind of expensive for what you get compared to the Shimano and the look pedal. So be careful uh, when you're choosing your speed play. Just because you can clip in either side, that doesn't make it something that you should jump to, okay? Another thing about speed play is you can really recess the cleat. You can buy an extra system that will allow you to slide the cleat further back. I have found riders though that have done that and they've got a little bit of what we call toe crossover. Yeah, when you turn your front wheel, your big toe hits the wheel that's not safe. So be very careful of that when using these pedals. I think that's speed play. I didn't down them too much, do I? I don't like it. <laughs> and also, speed play, they are not a bike fitter's choice. I wouldn't really be pushing anyone unless they came to me and begged that they wanted to be set up on a speed play. Okay, at the start of the video, I said there is a system out there that works really well on a road bike that might surprise you. Have you guessed it yet? Of course you have the SPD cleat, the Shimano mountain bike cleat. I see lots of riders in the studio and they've got very high levels of efficiency from this pedal system. And I believe it's because they've spent a higher volume of time on a flat pedal, on a flat shoe. I am always recommending flat pedal riding to improve your efficiency of the pedal stroke because you can't pull at the wrong time. Your body has to dial into the nervous system required to get maximum speed from that flat pedal. So if you've got one of these, hey, flip it over, try it out on your road bike because it's gonna be a lot cheaper if the system's already there because you're gonna have the shoe as well. Now, it is a similar size to a speed play. So again, those issues with stability if you're a larger rider. Also another thing, if you road cycle, you'll start to get addicted. Yes, there is a warning, addicted to speed. So you want to go quicker. So you will fall into that trap of looking at components. And one of the things is obviously the interaction of the shoe, the sole, the cleat, and the pedal system. A mountain bike shoe has a recessed cleat, and that's because you can go for a pee in a farmer's field and not screw up your cleat. 
or is that just me? <laughs> but what I mean is that rubber sole is not the same as the high-end road shoe with the carbon sole. So maybe you'll flip your SPD cleat onto a road shoe, first of all, before you actually make any changes onto a road cleat. There's lots of options there. So just don't be afraid of flipping this over onto your road bike. Hey, I hope that's answered a few of the questions at least. I know there's lots more to talk about with shoes and cleats and cleat positioning, but I think that was okay. Hey, don't forget, if the video has added any value to you or if you enjoyed some bits of it, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I go live every Monday at seven o'clock. You might just be the star of the next show, but also I'm building some courses on bike fitting from the basic setup in terms of cleats and shoes and pedals, all the way through to a DIY setup to improve your aerodynamics and your speed. So if you're part of the channel, you'll get an early warning of when these sessions are going to happen because they're going to be limited to a few numbers at a time. Hey, stay safe, keep smiling, keep spinning. I'll see you in the next video.